Hello, and welcome to the worldwide long-awaited premiere of Steve Silk's new movie, Owl About Evening. I'm Francie Brown, Farmington Land Trust board member and Academy MC with the Owl Entertainment Network. We are here on the red carpet tonight, and I can see Steve and the breakout star of the film, Olivia Longear, and Olivia's handler and friend, Farmington Land Trust board member, Diane Tucker, as well as another cast member. Steve, Steve, what an exciting night. It's an honor to be but a beat's length away from you and Olivia. Thank you, Francie. It is an honor to be here tonight, especially in the company of Olivia. What's your vision for the film, Steve? Surely this film joins the box office gold like the birds, To Kill a Mockingbird, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, in the bird movie category. It's quite an experience comparing it with those other movies. The owls were tough to work with, so it was almost bye-bye birdie. But luckily, uh, I think we got a product here that is going to compete easily with Howard the Duck. For the fam, Steve, tell us who are you wearing tonight? It was hard to decide what to wear, but number one was my uh, Farmington Land Trust baseball cap. I don't go out in public without that. Oh, oh, hi, Olivia. This is your first red carpet, isn't it? Who are you wearing this evening? Ooh. Ooh. Yes, exactly. Who? Olivia gets her clothing from the house of nature's nobleman. On with the show. I'm Diane Tucker. I'm a board member at the Farmington Land Trust and I'm a naturalist. And today I am here to talk to you about owls. In my time as a birder, I've been lucky to see uh, owls a few times. And once I was able to view an actual long-eared owl, um, which this is. And the amazing thing is that they huddle on a branch right next to the trunk of a tree. So they blend in almost completely. You, you could stand in front of them just a few feet away and not really realize that they were there. Their coloration is mottled and it helps make them look like part of any natural feature. Uh, if they were all one color, if they were all brown, they would actually stand out more. The ear tufts uh, help elongate the body and actually they draw their bodies in, their feathers close, so that they look as though they are actually a branch or part of the trunk. So how do you find owls? Well, sometimes you hear them uh, and sometimes seeing them goes along with hearing them. At this time of year, we're in the beginning of January right now, uh, you may hear owls because they are uh, starting to get noisy because they're calling one another. It's breeding season. Uh, baby owls are typically born in March or April and um, they need to find a mate. So different owls have different calls. Sometimes if you can approximate the call, you can see an owl move around and get lucky with a really nice view of an owl. The owls we're most apt to hear, and if you're lying in bed some night in Farmington or nearby, uh, you're very apt to hear a screech owl. They're common and they are everywhere. They're even in the city. You could hear a barred owl, and barred owls like to call sometimes during the day, so you could get lucky when you're taking a walk. And the other very common uh, owl is the great horned owl. That's a pretty big owl. Uh, so it's exciting not just to hear them, but also sometimes to see them. Um, if you're lucky, you can call one in, and here's how you do it. This is an owl call, and with it, I can pretty much approximate uh, any one of those three owls that are common in our neighborhoods. Uh, and you can remember how to do those calls with a little trick. The barred owl says, 
who cooks for you? That's what it sounds like, the rhythm. Who cooks for you? Now, if I were really lucky, since the barred owl likes to call during the day, I'd have one call back to me right now. But I don't think I'm gonna get that lucky. So the great horned owl, uh, the really big one, uh, he has a different rhythm. And he says, who is awake? Me too. I don't think we're gonna see one of those. The little screech owl, the one you can find almost anywhere, uh, sounds something like this. I, I don't have a call for it. I'll do my best. He sounds kind of like this. You can hear that just walking down the street sometimes. This is a long-eared owl. You might think that these are his ears, his long ears. These are ear tufts, but they're not ears. Everyone thinks that the owl can find his prey with those big eyes, but he really finds them with his ears. One ear is up here. The other ear is a little bit lower. And that means that the distance to a point out here is triangulated. It's different from one side to the other, and therefore he can hear where his prey is. The beauty? His prey can't hear him. This is a puppet of a snowy owl, and I want to use it to dispel the biggest myth, I think, uh, about owls. The myth is, of course, that you can turn he can turn his head all the way around the whole way, but he can't. He can turn his head about 270 degrees, and he's able to do that because he has some extra vertebrae in his neck. And uh, it helps a lot in terms of his hunting because he has that powerful, powerful sense of hearing. And his hearing really is the most uh, important sense that he has. Um, the triangulation to find prey is aided quite a bit. His hearing helps him locate where prey is, and it is absolutely vital. As I mentioned, everybody thinks these beautiful big owl eyes are what makes the owl so powerful a predator, but it isn't really true. Because they're so big, they take up a ton of room in his skull. Believe it or not, because of that, there isn't enough room for a lot of musculature, and his eyes don't really move. All right, this is an owl skull. You can see that the eye socket is enormous in comparison to the rest of the head. It takes up a huge amount of real estate on the bird's head, and, and there is very little room around to have muscles to allow it to move. Parenthetically, have a look at that beak. Uniquely and beautifully designed to shred meat. The owl is really uh, an amazing uh, predator and quite very much at the top of the uh, predator heap. Take a look at the amazing talons. They're enormously sharp covered with fur to protect them, but incredibly adept at grasping and, and killing prey. The beak, of course, used for ripping and shredding, but the amazing talons for pretty much all the other tools. This is a, a feather from a different kind of bird of prey. This is a hawk feather. The feathers zip up like a little zipper. They're all connected with little barbs and barbules, which are like the teeth of a zipper. So that when a hawk flies, he makes a lot of sound. You can hear that flap, flap, flap of his wings. The owl feather is different. His zipper does not go all the way out to the edge of the feather. They're free. 
they aren't held together and so they don't make any sound as the owl flies towards its prey. So it's not a comedy hour, it's really a talk about owls, but in order to talk about how owls do digestion, we have to have a little bit of mirth. And um, when an owl catches some prey, for example, a mouse, the body does not need the bones uh, for anything, nor does it need the fur. It needs the meat uh, to nourish the bird. And so what happens inside the owl's body is that the meat is separated from the bone and the, the fur. Uh, the, the meat goes to nourish the owl and the fur and the bones are compressed into uh, what we call an owl pellet. And the bird doesn't need it. So he gets rid of it and he does it a little bit like this. and out comes the owl pellet. So here's our pellet. And just to give you an idea of the nutrition of any given owl, I would venture to say this is a very large pellet and I wanna make this into something like a great horned owl pellet or, or something of that size. You can see right here, for example, I think, we have the skull of a little shrew or something similar to it. Or at least, ooh, look, a jawbone. Wow. So these little bones right here, this one here is a scapula, and this one here looks to me like it's one of the long bones, a leg bone or a, a, a forearm. And these two little ones beats me. They're, they're really little. So this uh, appears to be something like a uh, meadow vole or a shrew, a mouse, something along those lines. So where do you look for an owl? Well, the best place, of course, is at the top of a tree near the trunk. And they like to be in a place that's a little bit like this one. Uh, tall trees and a, a nice open area, a meadow is really good. So trees surrounding an opening is the way to go. Uh, and I would expect that on a June night, this might be a, a symphony of owls and their babies calling and learning how uh, to become grown-up owls. <coughs>
think of my self as the fly by night I used to be. Well, of course I am, and I will not that it makes any difference in the art of acting. I'm speaking. <laughs>